I realized on this trip what's missing in our relationship. Shanann texts to her husband. This poignant message was one of the last communications Shanann sent before she and her two young daughters, ages three and four, were brutally murdered. What does this message signify? Was Shanann reflecting on her own feelings, or was she addressing Chris's emotional distance? Could the tragic outcome have been averted had she kept this sentiment to herself? Despite any potential warning signs, Shanann returned home that night, unaware of the impending danger. What transpired in those final moments? Did she confront Chris about his affair, or perhaps her own? The exact sequence of events remains shrouded in mystery, lost to the memories of those involved. Welcome to Timeless Mysteries. In this episode, we delve into the life of Shanann Watts, exploring the journey that ultimately led to her untimely demise and her burial in an oil field. We all harbor secrets and pasts. Shanann was no different. Yet, few things in this world can justify such a heinous act of murder. Shanann Catherine Arzukek was born on January 10, 1984, in Passaic, New Jersey. Growing up in Aberdeen, North Carolina, she was part of a close-knit family with her parents, Frank and Sandra Arzukek, and her brother, Frankie. Shanann graduated from Pinecrest High School in Southern Pines, North Carolina, where she was known for her determination and positive spirit. After high school, Shanann married Leonard King. Their young love, unrestrained, could not have been prevented even if anyone had wanted to. Leonard joined the army as a means to attend law school and Shanann pursued nursing school. However, she soon dropped out to help pay for her husband's law school, taking a job selling pagers and cell phones for a company called The Dirty South. Within a couple of years, the marriage had gone bad. Leonard later said that after Shanann started managing The Dirty South, a pager cell phone company marketed to high-profile rappers, she stopped coming home at night and refused to tell him where she had been. He wanted to work it out through marriage counseling sessions, but Shanann had little interest in saving the marriage, and they divorced in 2007. Despite the emotionally traumatic divorce, Shanann continued to work hard, and by 2009 she had built her first home, a sprawling mansion costing well over $300,000, with four bedrooms and four bathrooms on a beautiful landscape. Shanann built her dream home. Estimates suggest she was earning a substantially high six-figure income at this time. However, later that year, she faced a new challenge, a diagnosis of lupus, a chronic autoimmune disease that causes fatigue, joint pain, and other debilitating symptoms. Despite these challenges, Shanann remained resilient and focused on building a future for herself. But she could not maintain the amount of work and soon wasn't earning at all as she was forced to learn how to deal with her illness. In 2010, Shanann met Chris Watts through Facebook. At a time when she was struggling with her health, Chris's supportive and caring nature quickly drew her to him. Their relationship blossomed, and they married on November 3, 2012, in a beautiful ceremony in Mecklenburg County, North Carolina. Chris's kindness and dedication were a source of strength for Shanann. Well, one thing led to another, and he's the best thing that has ever happened to me especially as she managed her lupus. He attended medical appointments with her, helped her manage her medications, and provided the emotional support she needed to cope with the disease. The couple moved to Frederick, Colorado, where they bought a house and started their family. Shanann and Chris had two daughters, Bella Marie Watts, born on December 17, 2013, and Celeste Catherine Cece Watts, born on July 17, 2015. Shanann was a devoted mother, deeply involved in her daughter's lives. She shared their milestones and daily activities on social media, showcasing their gap tooth grins and funny dances. The family enjoyed beach vacations to San Diego, trips to Disneyland, cherished moments together, and created memories filled with love and laughter. Despite the joyous moments, the Watts family faced significant financial struggles in June 2015, they filed for bankruptcy, revealing a debt of about $70,000 from student loans and credit card purchases. Chris earned about $63,000 from his job 
at Anadarka Petroleum while Shanan worked at the Children's Hospital. Their financial difficulties were a constant stressor. Despite these challenges, they managed to maintain a facade of normalcy, often sharing happy moments and achievements on social media. By all accounts, they appeared to have moved past their financial struggles, with Shanann finding success in a new job at LaVale, a lifestyle company selling health and wellness products. Her role as a promoter for LaVale allowed her to connect with a wide audience through social media. She was passionate about the company's Thrive line of products and often shared her experiences, building a significant following. She was even featured in a magazine. Reports suggest she was earning around $40,000 to $60,000 annually and was poised to earn more. However, accurate financial details are difficult to confirm. Shanann had big plans for her children. She was a helicopter parent who envisioned a bright future for Bella and Cece, filled with opportunities and happiness. She meticulously planned for their education, extracurricular activities, playdates, and overall well-being. Shanann wanted her daughters to have the best possible life, free from the struggles she had faced as a child. She was also 15 weeks pregnant with a son, whom they planned to name Nico Lee Watts, honoring her father with the middle name. This was evident through social media posts. If things were looking up for the Watts family, then what really happened? How did this positive turn of events end in tragedy? If you consider everything you heard from Chris's family, you might be inclined to believe that Shanann was actually the monster that drove Chris to madness. She was spending money they didn't have, blaming Chris for the things they couldn't buy and the places they couldn't go, casting blame for all the marital problems on him and never once holding herself accountable. But I'll ask you one simple question and then I'll let you form your own opinions. Does any amount of blame and nagging or instigating justify murder? It really doesn't matter if she started the fight that ended with her being strangled to death. Chris crossed it not just once, but multiple times. And he had many opportunities to step back and stop. But he continued and continued and continued. And this tragedy took the lives of four individuals and ruined the lives of everyone who loved them. As a parent myself, I can almost understand why a parent would want to blame someone else for the behavior of their child. I don't care if that child is a grown adult. You never stop being a parent. If you love your child, it's forever. You have a bond, and that bond is basically unbreakable. I wake up every, every morning just crying, you know, thinking this is not gonna be what's gonna happen every single day. Chris Watts is loved and has been loved by his parents his whole life. I know it doesn't seem logical that someone with such a normal life would commit such atrocities. It's in our nature to try to understand, yet some things can never be understood. So what does Shannon's final message signify? Shannon might have been hoping to open a dialogue with Chris to address their marital issues. It seems like she was seeking a more balanced and reciprocated emotional connection. This could imply that Chris had become distant or unresponsive to her emotional needs. However, Chris may have thought it was Shanann who was distant in the relationship. Regardless, her message conveys frustration and perhaps a plea for acknowledgement and change, but it didn't have the effect she had hoped for. There are substantial rumors regarding Shanann and the Dirty South. And while there isn't significant evidence to support this, I feel it's important not to ignore it entirely. It's said that she embezzled money from the Dirty South, and that's how she was making 500000 a year selling cell phones. She suspected that they had found out, and that's why she left her beautifully constructed home and moved to Colorado in the first place, to hide from these rappers that she had stolen from. And they finally found her when she started posting videos on social media. And she was killed for stealing from this company. What if the wrong man confessed to this atrocity? Next time on Timeless Mysteries, Cindy and Ronnie Watts will be under my spotlight. Please like and subscribe to my channel. And most importantly, 
leave your thoughts in the comments section. Join my community. I'd also like to invite you to become a member today for a better experience.